Okay, um, so what I'm showing you now is, is how to check powers and grounds on the computer, which is what we're gonna do. And what we've done is we've pulled a diagram. Um, fortunately, on these Mitchell diagrams, that they give you a description of what the wires are. It can still be done if there's no description, but it's a lot harder to do. But you can see right here it says ignition power. And I've highlighted that one. And I'm just looking down the line and I'm looking for anything that's a power or ground. And there's this one that says fused battery positive. Scroll down a little further. You got another one that says fused battery positive. And we're looking at the names again. Go down further and you see two main grounds right here. We're gonna check those two grounds. And then that's it. I, I scrolled the rest of the way down. And what I found at the bottom of the page, which I missed earlier, is another five volt supply that I need to address that I missed it. There are two separate five volt supplies external from the computer. And so this one goes to, right here is the vehicle speed sensor. And then there's a splice, you can stay right here, don't pan. There's a splice, and this splice goes off the page, and where it goes to is a transmission. Look at this one right here, right here. This is where the other wire goes, violet white, and goes to this transmission governor. Some type of uh, pressure sensor probably uh, governor pressure sensor, even though they're drawing it as a potentiometer, it's not. Um, we have a concern that either my governor pressure sensor or my vehicle speed sensor could be sorted out doing the same thing too, guys. Even though, back to this page, where we were testing before was pin 12. Where's it at? It was a white with a black. It said 5 volt supply. Where's it at? right here sorry a17 white and black that's where we were before that's where we were doing all of our tests and so we have a 5 volt supply coming out on a17 and back down here we have a 5 volt supply coming out on b31 looks like two separate 5 volt supplies but I'm gonna tell you something guys internally they're shared it's the same circuit if either one of those halves get sorted to ground we have a problem It'll pull everything down. So rather than crawling under the car and finding the vehicle speed sensor and finding the governor pressure sensor, to save time, I'm going to show you another method. I need to find this wire first. B31, we're going to find that wire. I'm going to unplug it from the harness on the computer, and we're going to isolate it like that. Okay? Pause it. B31. Okay, back to the diagram real quick, what we've done to identify this uh, this violet white wire right here. You see it's the last pin on the B connector and it's right next to a brown and orange. So rather than fighting the numbers on the connector, again, violet white next to a brown orange. Come over to our connector and what we found is there is a violet white wire right here. Last connector, last pin, and it's right next to a brown and orange turn this so you can see the color. See the brown orange? Right here. You guys see it? Yes. Okay, brown orange right there, violet white right here. So, we can uh we could disconnect this and ohm the circuit, but the problem is ohming the circuit for a short the ground with the sensor still plugged in is we're going to have some kind of reading. So there's that's something to consider is, you know, what's the resistance through the governor pressure sensor? What's the resistance through the transmission vehicle speed sensor? And I'm not sure, right? One's a Hall effect and the other one's a pressure sensor and I don't know what the reading should be. And in light of saving time, and I'm not saying always to do this, but I got plenty of harness slack in here, okay? I'm actually going to cut this wire right here. That's what I'm going to do. And in the process though, before I cut that wire, what we want to do is we want to monitor this reference circuit still while I'm doing that. Can I get somebody to turn the key back on? Again, I would not recommend doing this. I'm just uh, eliminating any variables and we have enough harness slack in this that we can fix it later. Okay, I'm about ready to snip this wire. Can you see where my 
Where am I? Uh, now zoom out a little bit, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, you got a good picture of that? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna cut it. And watch the voltmeter. What happened? Nothing. All right, so what I just did, guys, is just save myself about 20 minutes of digging under the car for these connectors. I'll fix that in a, in a lot faster time than I will be crawling underneath the car worrying about the other two sensors. How's my other two sensors on this five volt reference circuit? If they were sorted, when I cut that wire, this other circuit would have came back to life, right? Okay, so we didn't have that happen. We'll fix that wire when we're done. That just eliminated the other half of the circuit. Now we gotta do powers and ground. So we're gonna go after the first power feed, which is a3, it's an orange wire, and it's gonna have a space, no, A3, A4. Orange wire next to a black with a light blue. Sorry, it's A, A2 is orange, A4, black and light blue. So we should have a orange wire, a space, and then a black and light blue. And there you can see that, there's orange. I don't know if you can see the space right there between it. There's a black with a light blue, that's absolutely my feed wire. So I'm gonna T-pin that carefully. Key is on, loaded circuit. I got 10.5 volts on that wire. Granted, the fuel pump uh, is uh, running all the time, so our battery's getting weak here. Uh, let me uh, turn our battery charger up just a little bit. So a little higher, 10.9. So that's a good feed. Next one, down the line, is A14, it's yellow and red. There's two spaces next to it, A14 and uh, A15 is black red. So a yellow red and a black red and a space. All right, so we said we we're looking for A14, which is a yellow red wire, and what we found, and this time I had to go by numbers because I couldn't locate the wire. And here's, uh, here's, um, there's pin one, pin 11, you're not gonna be able to see that on the camera, but there's one, there's 11. The next row would be 12, so there's three rows. There's a middle row here. And what you have, this is pin 12, this is pin 13, there's pin 14, it's got a white plug in it. There's nothing in pin 14. And then if we're reading this right, pin 15 should be my black with a red that I was looking for and it is, looking at my diagram, it is black with a red and then right next to that is a tan with a black which is that one. So the diagram's right the rest of the way but we're missing a feed so sometimes you run into that on these diagrams. Uh, let's just keep going down the line. Obviously there was never, intense, the intention was not to have a wire there on this model so little incorrect diagram. So we're gonna go down to A22. So uh, the way that that would go is, wow, this is wrong too. Cause there's one through 11 and this would be uh, 12, should be 12 through 22. Oh yeah, you're right. There's 22 right here. And it is red with a yellow. And the correct way to check this is not with it unplugged. I don't want to measure this. I'm gonna do it to show you. I don't wanna measure this unplugged because the circuit's unloaded. It's never a good check to do a voltmeter test with a circuit unloaded. So, all right, keys on, I'm reading 0.5 of a volt on this feed. And that is not good. Right, what should we have? This is a feed, fuse battery positive. It, com it comes from fuse number 20 in the fuse box, in the power distribution box. There should be voltage there, and there's not. But as I was saying before, unplugged, you never wanna test it. You always want it plugged in, loaded circuit. So we're gonna go check fuse number 20, which is where it comes from. Follow the diagram. See if you can see this. Use the camera light. Fuse number 
or A22, that's the one I'm checking right there. Red, yellow, you follow it, comes over here, comes up to that relay in a splice, followed over this way, and it comes up to fuse number 20 in the power distribution box. We're gonna check that fuse. Okay guys, I'm gonna test these fuses. The key is on. The best and uh, quickest way to check a fuse is just touching the terminals. You gotta obviously make sure your light works and my light's not working. I'm connected to battery positive. Always test your light. Make sure the light works. Go back to the fuse. Check both sides of the fuse. You need to be able to see my light in the camera. Can you see that way. my test light? There you go. Is that better? Yeah. Like that? There you go. Yeah. So both sides of the fuse. You see a fuse that's hot on that side and it's hot on that side. That's a good fuse. It's the smaller ones I want to focus on. And uh, good ones should light on both sides as that one did. And this one. And this one. And that one. Can you see that the angle? Here's all right. The, and this one got power on this side. Okay, go over here on this side. I got nothing. Got power here. Got nothing here. All right. So that's my fuse, guys. That we were worried about. Let's uh, pop that fuse out. You see that? You see the blown part? Yeah. There's a, the old school way of checking a fuse, is pull it out take a look at it. Uh, that's not always the most accurate way, but uh, clearly that fuse is blown. Uh, we're going to change this fuse. We're going to see what happens. Fuses don't blow for no reason. There's something that blew that fuse. We're going to have to address that too. But let's get power back to this computer. Let's see what happens. Pause. Key on? Is it? That fuel pump still running? Yeah. Okay. We're recording. I can't hear it. That thing's going to pop. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to. Uh, I'm, I'm going to plug his fuse back in. So, um, our concern got. Are we recording? Mm -hmm. Guys, listen. Um, our concern is this fuse blue for a reason. And uh, so I'm going to plug his fuse back in. We'll see what happens. As soon as I plugged it in, it popped it. Second I plugged that fuse back in, I heard it. Yeah, throw a 30 in there was the comment. No, we don't want to do that. Right, what I need to do now, I guess, is uh, show you guys how to find a short to ground, huh? Yeah. Pause it. All right. So this is our 20 amp fuse that's blown as soon as we plug it in. That's our feed to our computer. And that wire comes down, down this way, goes into this splice right here. Uh, I didn't map the rest of that out, I should have. But that's our wire we were checking at the computer, that red with the yellow that we had no voltage on, on A22. And as soon as we plug the fuse in, it blew. And uh, so what we need to do is map out everything that's on this diagram and I've done that already and you can see that when it comes down to this splice right here that it comes up to the ASD relay which powers pretty much everything on this car so with this relay being turned on that short could be anywhere between of course the fuse and the computer that we just mapped out so that would be from here this wire right here from there to the fuse our sort could be there and then our sort could also be in our ASD circuit so one of the things we could do to isolate it would be to unplug the ASD relay and then plug a new fuse in and see if our sort is there or if it's not does that make sense so uh, can one of you guys do that for me real quick and we'll see the result and then we'll, we'll talk about where to go from there.